Dear brothers. I am Atama. Continuing our journey, I will comment on Chapter 8 of Book 2 of Telos. Before starting this chapter I would like to make a recommendation. Many of you do not listen to your heart, and look for the solution, support, or miracle in everything that appears to solve your own problems. Listen to your hearts. Let yourself be carried away by what the flow of your souls brings. Do not try to overcome the obstacle by going around it, this is not wise, because later on it will come back more intense and more difficult to overcome. Don't see this journey as the way to solve all your problems. Many think that simply following something will clear the path, make it lighter. I can say that the lessons that need to be learned will be there, along the way. Yes, you can make them softer, softer in the sense of a total understanding of what needs to be done. I'll give you an example here, your lesson is to climb 100 steps. Then many think that our help will reduce the number of steps. No. Our help will make you climb the 100 steps without getting tired. Is different. Don't think we're going to eliminate anything. We just make it easier for you to get through it, but we don't change the lesson. So don't try to follow this journey or any other with this intention, because you will achieve nothing, on the contrary, you will be accumulating another problem on your path, due to your cleverness of wanting to get rid of everything without going through anything. The meditations contained in this entire process are not mandatory. Learn to feel your heart. If you are not ready for them, the result may be the opposite of what you are expecting. Listen to the heart. Ask your higher self if you are ready for that meditation. Many people do meditation and become frustrated. It's because? Because they see nothing, feel nothing, perceive nothing, and why? Because it wasn't the time. You were not yet ready to be in our temples. Understand it. And this is nothing that diminishes your power or evolution, it's just not your time yet. It's as if you were trying to reach the uppermost floors of that pyramid, without having gone through the floors in between, as if you climbed the building from the outside without taking the stairs. When you get up there nothing will happen to you, you will continue to be the same as you were on the floor you were on and you will return there. You will achieve nothing. We have said here several times, learn to listen to the higher self. Don't do things because someone else did it. Someone else said it, someone else thought it was good. Listen to your higher self. When each of you understands that the journey is unique, it is yours, and that you do not need to be with the rest, neither above nor below, but that you need to be at the point of your journey, then yes, you will learn to follow the flow normally, letting yourself be carried by those waters, sometimes calm, sometimes turbulent, but all within the correct time of your learning of your evolution. This journey is not just reading a book. Every time I come here I bring my energy too, and whoever listens to me with an open heart receives it and is transformed. Because this is my mission. I'm not just coming here to comment on the book for the sake of commenting, there is a mission here. And those who are letting their hearts carry them are living this moment very well. Don't do it because someone else does it. Don't see because someone else sees. Don't listen because someone else listens. Everything has to come from you. Hear, see, and feel, through your higher self not through others. So back to the subject of this chapter, which is a subject that bothers many of you who are in the third dimension. Why does death exist? Why do we lose people we love? Why do some people go at the right time, others go drastically? others go before their time. Understand the following, before incarnating, each soul defines its path, defines the lessons it will learn, defines the path it will take, and defines the way it will leave the physical body. The word death only says the death and end of the physical body, not the soul, the soul does not die. When she loses her physical body she does not die, she continues to be a soul. And each soul chooses the moment to leave, the moment to leave this outfit. And why are many doing this? 
because they don't feel ready to face the ascension at this moment. They understand that they still need to learn a lot to reach this stage. Are they souls without courage? Of course not, on the contrary, they are souls aware of their own capacity at this moment. They don't see themselves ready yet to ascend. How many reincarnations will they still have? It depends on each soul's journey. For those who stay, who lose a loved one, just realize that there is, like a journey, where they went to a place that you can't be, but they are there, and there will come a day later that you can be with them again. You have already incarnated and reincarnated many times, created bonds, and I'm not talking about karmic bonds here, I'm talking about bonds of love. And that every now and then you meet again, in other ways, not necessarily as family. There are many ways for two souls who love each other to find each other again. Accepting grief is important, never repress it. But accept it not as the end of your life as something that makes you lose the will to live. When this happens, think that the one who left will be suffering seeing your suffering. Is this what you want, for him to suffer? Unless this is some big revenge. Then I will say, be careful with your feelings. But, otherwise, the one who left wants to see you well, wants to see that you accepted his departure, and that you don't blame anyone not even God the Father or Mother for what happened. There are ways and ways and ways for a soul to disconnect from the physical body, and some souls choose to be those executioners. Why? Walk of every soul. There are no judgments. There are souls that simply exist to be the executioners, those who will take the life of that soul at that moment. Are they shadow souls? The vast majority do because they don't care what they do. They took this mission upon themselves, as if they were helping souls who needed to leave. Someone would have to play this role. So there are no judgments regarding these souls, but they exist, and they often become executioners of many souls. Of course this is not a divine walk, obviously not. But in the same way that many souls are tasked with practicing the tests, these also have this mission. And why is it not a divine mission? Because God the father or mother never chose to take the life of a child abruptly or before time, but this was the path that humanity took, and the souls wanted it, and within their free will these souls choose to be the executioners of the souls that need to leave. This is all too complex for you to understand, but this is certainly very typical of the third dimension. But the subject here is the acceptance of death. There is a decision by that soul to leave and there is also the other side, the passage through a very strong feeling of loss. It's because? Because that soul also chose to go through this. So my brothers, everything happens within a balance. Just live each moment and believe me, the connection is never lost, never broken, when it is a connection of love, unless one of the souls wants it, it disconnects from that other never to connect again. It is a decision of the soul, but otherwise, all the connections of love experienced by all souls remain, and in truth I can say that you have become one big family, just like us here in Telos. This day will come for you and you will be able to live good times, and miss all those who passed away and who were extremely loved by you. Live in mourning, but above all, accept that it was that soul's choice to leave, and it was your soul's choice to have this loss. Nothing happened by chance. Look at everything with love, and the grief will certainly pass much more easily.